snow, let it snow, let it snow. everyone and welcome to vlogmas day 14 i'm jenica i'm annika and today why don't you explain today i put on well yesterday i put a poll up on my instagram it was questions you're too afraid to ask your mom so i'll ask them for you so today i'm going to be asking mom those questions we had to hop on this trend obviously, obviously. now with that said i am a 29 year old mother so i do not know everything and i have never claimed to know everything so maybe take this advice with a grain of salt. And I don't know these questions at all. Second, we do want to apologize for the construction you will hear in the background. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's not too bad. This was the only time that we could film and there is construction going on right there. So. Okay, we're just going to hop right in. Okay, go, go ahead. Did I turn out the way you wanted? Yes. I feel like what I... What did you think I was going to be like? I didn't have really any expectations for you, to, like, in all honesty. I really honestly just wanted you to be a good person. I didn't care if that was meant you were a soccer player or played in the band. Like, I didn't care what your hobbies were, really. I just wanted you to be a good person. Now, I had hoped that you would be just, like, some cute little, like... Chilling. <laughs> chilling girl with, like, really good clothes style. But I really, like, didn't care at the end of the day. Did you ever sneak out as a child? And if you did, give me some tips. <laughs> I never snuck out. I never snuck out. I mean, obviously, like, other than literally getting pregnant and having a baby, I didn't break the rules. I still, to this day, won't break rules. I, I'm not a rule breaker. I don't think sneaking out is anything I'm ever interested in. Well, at my house, like, my mom was just super strict. So, like, I wouldn't have ever dared. And if I was home, normally I had Anna, because, like, what was I supposed to do? Leave a baby in the basement no so I never snuck out there and then who I always like hung out with in high school her mom we would tell her mom everything that we did so we didn't have there was no need for us to sneak out there so I just know that ask you and if you say no there's probably a reason you're saying no yeah so and then if you say yes you just know I am. don't act all angelic I have never but you've thought about it I that doesn't mean I've done it though there's so many questions so many questions about just like how to ask to be on birth control mm -hmm. and how to not make the wrong impression with it mm -hmm. and just how to not make parents freak out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that this is a great, great question, especially for people that were raised similar to I. It was very much like abstinence culture. No sex was the only education that we were given and obviously that didn't really work out for me realistically birth control is given to so many people for bad periods so if you got a super super bad period you're experiencing high cramps you're having to go home you're nauseous you get sick when you're on your period birth control does help kind of regulate those symptoms I mean I've talked about this before there's only been one time since I had Annika in 15 years that I've not been on birth control and during that time was the worst my periods have ever been so I'm not even sexually active right now and I'm on birth control simply because I would not be able to handle my periods without birth control I, like, it takes over her whole like week because she can't just control how her body feels it's just awful so that's a really good thing I mean you might have to do some groundwork of laying it down for a few months of having bad periods and then just be like look I think that I need to go to a gynecologist and see about getting on something that will help my period so you don't even have to say birth control but once you're in that room the gynecologist cannot tell your parents what you discuss and they also they know their way around words with parents like if they come to you and they're like are you want to be put on birth control and you say yes they can word that with your parents to make it the best decision for yeah, everybody they call it the fancy name. yeah I mean well they can just be like this really is gonna help and it does help with your period symptoms second acne acne is a big thing that also birth control does help with now let me just say this getting on birth control is not a free card no. to just go out and do whatever you want still please use condoms practice safe sex because okay thanks <laughs> because there still are diseases and things i would strongly suggest as soon as you start fooling around with your little boyfriend get on birth control okay, this one you can't take too personal <gasps> okay. okay but you would be able to help a lot with this one so this is why i'm telling you okay it's gonna be something about my weight isn't it no i'm 21 and feeling guilty for moving out and leaving my single mom alone how do i fix that you move right back in with your mom <laughs> You made right back in with your mom. No. no, just kidding. 
I'm just kidding. As much as, obviously there's gonna come a day where we might not live together. As much as that like tears my actual soul apart, I think that is a part of my life that I am excited to experience. I mean, your mom probably- Excited. Shut up. I think that just being there for your mom, calling, just call your mom, call, call your mom, mom call, call your mom, mom, text your mom. Even, this goes for single dads too. If you have moved out of a home that you were living, if you were raised by your grandparents and you move out, just as long as you're checking in because truly those years of like 17 to 19 is when you kind of forget that your family cares about you as much as they do. You never know. I think especially with this past year we've seen, you never know when your last moment with somebody is. And as long as they know that you're good, that's fine. Like if one day I'm ever living alone, I just want to know that Annika is, I don't have to necessarily know where she's going to be every night because we're not living together, but I just want to know that she's good. You know what I mean? So just let her know that you're good. Send her just a little heart text every now and then. And FaceTime. FaceTime the f out of your mom. Carrie and I talk on FaceTime every day. All the time? Every day. Drake went with me one time was like, do you really call mom this much? And I'm like, you don't? Yeah, I call mom every five seconds. There's so many questions like that. Like that? About moving yeah. out? About moving out? You guys, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Are you going to move out? Oh my god. One day she literally looked at me and she's like, let's not talk about you moving out anymore. Yeah. That will send me into the spiral. So when she says she's excited for that time of her life, she's like, I'll just get so many animals I won't know what to do with myself. I'm going to have like some midlife crisis where I like buy a farm. Did you say farm? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be okay. We don't have to worry about that right now. Will you ask the next question? Do you ever go through AJ's phone and do you go through her text more specifically? That is a great question. I am just not a person that wants or needs to see anything going on in her phone. One time, and there, were, there was, when she first got a phone, I would just kind of keep up and take a peek at the apps and make sure she wasn't doing anything inappropriate. One time I did find some stuff that I had to put her back in her place about. Truly that was when she was in like sixth grade. Like I... Oh, I downloaded Tinder one time as a joke. She got a notification. Oh, I lost my absolute freaking mind. <laughs> I did it like one day at school. Awful. But as long as I kind of know what like apps and stuff. At this point, we just have a relationship where I can't trust her. I'm not being naive. There's always people who are like... Even if you do check your kids' phones, there's still stuff that you don't I just don't care and I don't want to see it. Because there's a lot of times that like it'll probably be conversations between her and somebody that I don't forgive and forget. I hold grudges. You know how high school girls are. They're like friends with somebody one day and not the next. Like I can't be involved in that because I will just never like that person ever again. So I just like don't care what's on her phone. You know, I just, that's, I used to like try to ground her from her phone and stuff and that was just like, I also feel like parenting, you have to kind of cater your parenting towards each kid differently. Like you can't just, if you have three kids, you can't parent them all the same. And I feel like for Annika, the phone is not something that I'm choosing to consume too much. Like we're in a okay place. There are some kids that probably do need their phone checked. She's not one of them. Or she might be and I just don't, I just don't want to see it. Do you think, I know you've said this before but I just want to put it out there in a specific in a specific slot for it. So. Okay, okay. Do you think if you ever decide to have another child, you will love them as much as you love me? <laughs> what a terrible question. What I mean, there's only question. one answer. I mean, I'm sorry, okay. that kid did not get that I went through. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the thing. There's just no particle of my being that wants to go through this again. Ever. I have done my time. 12 years of the mask man. <laughs> I think that if I wanted multiple kids, like I should have cranked them out kind of together. And obviously I couldn't do that because I was a, a little child myself. The thought of me, like I just, mm -mm, I have no interest. Now, if I was to have more children, I do honestly, I have thought about and I'm very, very open to in my late thirties, forties. If I feel like this is my calling, I do think that fostering maybe a teen who is pregnant, maybe a child from a teen pregnancy. I think that that would be a wonderful thing for me to do. Um, and obviously I would like love that child if for some reason I changed my mind well, and like- you can't say that you'll love me more if it's a- uh. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. Like obviously I'm going to love any child that is present in my life. I'm going to love to the max, no question, lay down my life for any child that is mine blood or not however i don't think anybody will ha nobody will have our bond no i mean i, I didn't know where you were going yeah nobody is gonna but... nobody's gonna have this bond but i will love to the max any child um okay so we don't know the exact situation of this okay but this one says how to ask to you more freedom because i feel like i'm going to get yelled at 
I, def I feel like it depends on what the freedom is that you're wanting. So, like, if it's later curfew, mm -hmm. maybe start by just, like, 30-minute increments. Yeah. I think the I best thing is, honestly, to, to help with parents' trust is for them to trust your friends as much as they trust you. Mm -hmm. There are friends that Annika has that I, if she says that she's with this person, like, totally, like, I trust whatever they do. If she says that she's with some other person, I, she probably won't even be able to go. Like, I feel like developing a friendship between your parents, and not a friendship, but developing a relationship with your parents and your best friend or whatever friend, that's going to be with the core because they need to have trust in that other person too because at the end of the day, your life is in their hands too, you know, what, with whatever you guys are doing, whatever you guys' decisions you're making. So I feel like it definitely is better for the parents to, and, and don't just ask for a lot, you know, just be like, hey, like I, I want to be able to prove myself to you. How can I get an extended curfew? How can I be able to go to the football game, you know, without my parents? What are the steps? Now there are some age or just maybe ask them like is this gonna change when I turn 16 or is this gonna be different when I'm start high school? One thing I have learned not to ask is the reason. Yeah, don't ask a reason because you just because the, the only thing you'll get in response is I don't have to. You don't have to understand. And they don't, don't have, have to tell. Yeah, you. and they honestly at the end of the day, like parents don't have to tell you. But if you're being respectful, sure. Sure. if you're being respectful in a way of well, how what can I do to earn this? from you. I think that's a respectful way to go about that's it. That's a good answer. Something that you wish you knew at 15. Oh my god. That high school literally does not matter. I'm glad that I learned that when I'm 15. Oh, I just, I wish that I, I wish that I knew at the time, because I, I felt like when I was there that I wasn't going to live in my hometown past 18. Like, I, I did not think that I was going to, but you also can't really see that. Like, I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know what I was going to do. Am I going to make friends anywhere else? Like, this is all I've ever known. Even though I felt like I was going to get out and move, it still was so consuming. And at that time, there were so many, I just tried to please so many people and be friends with people that weren't friends with me. And I just wish That's that I knew that way. high school literally is 95% of the population's worst four years of their life and not to get too caught up in it. 95%. Yeah, I also wish at 15 that I, obviously you guys know I've always been close with my family, but I still think that those like later teen years, you just get so busy and you get so busy becoming your own person that you forget about your family. So there's just a time that you're like obsessed with your grandparents, you kind of grow away from them and then you respect them again on a whole nother level once you're older. I just wish that I would have kept that consistent throughout my teen years as well. Does AJ ever feel like you're overprotective because of what you went through? So I feel like this is more of a question for me. <laughs> I feel like I have had to learn boundaries both ways. Like obviously there's just no shape, way, form, and fashion anyway that I want her to experience anything that I've experienced ever, specifically teen pregnancy. We have just always been so open and it did take Annika one time. Annika looked at me in the face and was like, Mom? I know teen pregnancy even more than you do. I know it from my mom's side. I know it from my dad's side. I know it from my four grandparents' side. I know no, it from my cousin's side, side. My aunts and uncles' sides. And I know it from the child's side. And I don't want to put a child through this either. As far as that goes, we don't really have any issues there anymore, I don't think. I think that we, we're very open and honest about that kind of stuff. What gets me is that I start getting in my head about am I making the right parenting decisions. So some, I feel like I parent very strictly for Annika. There are some things, I mean, we're going through something right now that I'm like, am I making the right parent decision here? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing here or am I am I being clouded by my close relationship with Annika so that's where it gets a little foggy for us but what were you gonna say I was gonna say that once it was a rough like eighth grade was rough that was when I knew I was getting older and like I could do more stuff but she, I hadn't proven it to her yet so she was just like mm -mm, no not yet and so I, it eventually took me to like freshman year to prove that I was like mature enough to do everything. I don't even think freshman year I think freshman year was still pretty tragic as well this year is the first year that like if you walk out this door and you tell me what you're doing where you're going who you're going to be with like I'm not going to question it and most of the time like I feel like you're in a really good place right now to where you're only doing things that are good for are you too yeah, yeah. One day I came home from a cheer practice that was like a single stunt cheer practice. She was like, this is not what time cheer practice ended. I was like, I, w I was at cheer. She was like, 
What time did it end? It was a, it was a whole time. I do get mom on her every now and then. There's just a lot of things on here about me getting pregnant and all types of that. And I just don't want to. That's just simply not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it's just. Also, Annika is on birth control. I don't think that. Yeah. Are you comfortable saying that? Yeah. I mean, we've never said that, but Annika is, she was a person that had to literally miss school over her periods and just, I don't want, I mean, if she, honestly she's also not, not dated or anything, but like, I, I think birth control is a great thing to be on, so. When, I know when it's past my birth control time, when I start crying all the time. Yeah. So. It helps it her helps like so emotionally much. as well yeah. too. We're, we're good over here. We're good over here. Neither one of us are sexually active and we're on birth control. No babies for us. What, this one I just want to know your response to. Okay. What would you do if I came home just a little bit more than tipsy? Jane Maria. This one's hard. This one's very hard. We have and to throw some hypothetical I know, in there. I know, I know. I understand that kids start experimenting with I really didn't. I mean, me and my friend, I'm not going to say who. I mean, it's my only high school friend. We just were little angel babies. And we were in high school right around. How many around. times do you think she's going to say that this video? This video? We were just we little nerds. But we were also like little nerds. Like, nobody wanted to be friends with us. But we were riding around with some older boys. And they just pulled out a bag of weed. And we started sobbing. We started sobbing. I was probably like 16 or 17. We started sobbing. We got out of the car right there and ran like a mile back to her house. So that was a little dramatic. You are a little loser. I know. I'm a loser. And then we like my first time Did drinking you say, alcohol. I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Can you no, we call us the scene. And then my first time drinking alcohol was probably like the next summer. We were at some field party. If you're a small town gal, you know you know the vibes. And there was this huge horse trough of what's called hunch punch which is basically just vodka and hawaiian punch and we were like i guess we're drinking so that was the first time we ever drank it was does not know this? no mimi doesn't know this Sorry, she mom. does know this was really i was really like a good kid in high school and then you know i feel like every high schooler has is is presented with an opportunity i don't know it's a really hard thing because obviously it's like illegal and like we don't want to promote I, I will never promote underage drinking but like, but like I also know that she's not like an angel and if she goes to a high school party and she I just want to make sure regardless of any of my own rules I want to make sure that my child knows she calls me and she has been in a party and she has been drinking I will come get her and I'm not gonna be mad at that moment we might have a talking to and I will watch her have that hangover with with joy in my heart because I'm like you deserve that but I just more importantly than than drinking rules is to make sure that my child knows that she has a safe ride home yeah. don't can drink though the chances of me getting invited to a high school party <laughs> are excellent very slim this one isn't a question okay but I kind of want it I just, also I'm, let me just throw in there if you do drink and you call your parents for, for a ride and they think, uh, expect to be grounded i mean don't don't just think that you get a free pass expect to be grounded you either have to pick and choose like you can choose yeah you know what i am gonna drink i'll be grounded for two weeks but is this worth it weigh out your options but don't expect to just not get in trouble this one was a two-part question okay and it was how do i bring a boyfriend home to meet my parents mm -hmm. and how do i assure they don't do anything bad like the parents the parents do. okay i think this if you're if you're worried that they're going to say anything or do anything or whatever at that first initial meeting my first reaction goes to like them saying something like mean to the to the boyfriend well they're just a boy i think that you're just gonna have to be like look if they say some crazy things they just say crazy things whatever like i mean i don't know what to tell you but i think that this is where i would this is what i would want in that situation i would want a it to not be something that they like i wouldn't want it to be the very first time your parents met your boyfriend him coming over and like y'all go into your room or y'all go into a base like that just Make keeps dinner, too much panic in in the parents because anytime annika has had boys over i mean i just pace i pace i go in my room and i just walk from wall to wall like Wah! when we're in here watching iCarly yeah, yeah, yeah and they're literally in here like watching iCarly movies but anyway I wouldn't put your parents in that because if they're already going to be uncomfortable, they're, they're, that's going to set them over the edge. And they will absolutely stand outside your door and, and listen for sounds. <laughs> anyway. You will. Also, if you're, if you're worried about like conversation, I would maybe not do dinner. I would maybe do more of like an event. So if I were like going to the movies, 
as a family be like, hey, can my boyfriend come? That way it's small talk when you get yeah, to the lobby. You can't really but talk. then there's no talking no there, talk. and there's just like your presence is there. It's very calming. Then you can talk about the movie afterwards and then he goes home. Or then y'all go great go get ice cream or something. You know, something that's something that's short. Short, short and sweet. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Nice to know. <laughs> nice to know. Annika is a little bit boy crazy. She was. She's not as bad right now. I never, obviously I don't, I wouldn't say I don't want her to date, but I, she's you don't never. You the attention off of you. No, no, no. If Annika literally came to me right now and was like, so-and-so asked me to be their boyfriend or their girlfriend, I would be like, great, love that for you. And we no, would get the Christmas tree. No, you would not. Yes, no, I would. Don't make it would. seem like I'm like this, no. like holding you hostage. You would be like, him, really? You have dated some doozies. <laughs> doozies yeah and every time you go him and it eventually we'd say remember that hmm? i've always been right let me just most of the time also your parents are right no it depends on the which, parents. which one has not been right i've not been right about it depends on the parents okay well anyway i would never like not let her date or she's never had an age limit to where she can date or anything like that like she I feel like if you set if you say like you can't date until you're 16, like they're still going to. They're going to either way. So y'all will be here for her for first boyfriend. So well, I guess we we'll all go through it together. Official boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. She's like had fake boyfriends. I've had like flings, I guess. Yeah, flings. Anyway, anyway can you do like two more? Sure. How to deal with the rude comments about your acne at school? I think we have two different reactions. Yeah. Honestly, in high school, in college, whenever, you're gonna, people are going to find something to talk to you about, or talk about, talk about you about. And it, always. that's always. Always. It, it might doesn't be, even have to be true. No, it might be acne, it might be hair, it might be weight, it might be clothes, it might be the sport you play. Whether it's acne or something else, like, they're going to talk about you. If someone talks about your acne, that's, what a low blow, because that's something you literally can't control. That is something you can't control. Their self-esteem is. I mean, at least talk about my personality or something that is something, like my yeah. fault. But I feel like with something like acne, you're already so self-conscious about it yourself. When I was, when I had my huge acne, I mean, I just felt so embarrassed. All I, I felt like anytime I stepped out of my house, everyone was immediately looking at all my zids. You can't give that control to somebody else. Mm -hmm. This is the last one. Okay, last one. Also, Annika is going to edit this video a little bit. So I have been trying to reply to some comments with my own YouTube channel. Oh yeah, we need to talk about this. I legit have like seven subscribers. It's there's no content there's and there will no, not be any content right now. Right but. now, it's just I'm getting it set up, I'm getting it ready, and there's a lot of things that I can't do until I have a hundred subscribers. If you wanna go over there, help a little bit. She will be responding. I'll pin your comment. If you comment on a video, I'll pin it so people okay. know which one is your actual yeah. channel. But Annika wants to be able to respond to comments as well. So I've added her. She had to make a channel so that I could add her as a um, manager of our channel and she comments under Annika Jane. But I'll have it as a pinned comment on this comment so that way, or on this video, so that way you know which one is her. All right, this is the last one. We can both talk about it again. Okay. Any tips on being a teenager? It absolutely sucks, let me tell you. Well, I just feel like I'm three years into it and I want out. I'm tapping out. Your teen years, you're learning so much about yourself, but that's still not even the version of you that you're going to be one day. So, I mean, anybody that knew me from the age 13 to 19, no you didn't. Who is that girl? I don't know her. She does She's not know me. me. But that girl would be so proud of this girl. So. I feel like as long as you're kind of staying focused towards dreams, and it doesn't have to be anything extreme. It does not have to be like, you're gonna be a doctor, you wanna go get into this college. It doesn't even have to be like huge dreams. As long as you're focused on being a good person and being the best version of yourself, a lot of the groundwork for your adult version of yourself is laid there when you're a teen. People are always going to remember how you treated them. People are always, always, always going to remember how you treated them. I tell Annika that all the time. I can remember things that people have said to me now when I'm 29 that said stuff to me when I was in high school. As long as you're being a person that makes other people feel good, you'll in turn feel good, truly. I, I feel like it's such a good time to, um, instead of focusing on your Instagram, instead of focusing on who you're friends with, what party you're going to, who you're going to the game with, focus on just being a good person and you'll find good people that oh way. Oh my God, yeah. 
Yeah. Mine's just like attaching on to her like good person. I will always, always remember the people that were so mean to me in high school. And, but then I'll also remember the times, I'll also remember the people that I looked forward to seeing every day and I was like, okay, at least I'll have that person to talk mm -hmm. to. It's not one of those things that just goes away after a week. Like you remember those people that really made it worth going to school for. Yeah. Annika was, I, I will remember this moment for the rest of my life. When Annika was about four or five years old, she was obsessed with Twinkle Toes, the shoes. Sketchers that like lit up. Yeah, you know the vibe. She was obsessed with Twinkle Toes. We, maybe she was like six because we were in the mall, just right down the middle of the mall. There was a little more toddler age girl just spinning around, loving life. And she spun around in her little dress and she looked at Annika's shoes and she went, oh, I love your shoes. And Annika's face lit up in a way that I had never seen it before because that was the first time in her life that someone else her age not an adult was complimenting her telling her she looked cute whatever whatever it was someone her age that saw her shoes and loved her shoes as much as she loved her shoes, love shoes. and since that day like literally Annika was in kindergarten since that day when she gets out at school I said compliment somebody compliment Sunny. I've not been good about that lately but I need to start again even in middle school like every single day she got out of the car compliment now don't be fake compliments don't do a Regina George, I love your bracelet, where'd you get it? No, 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 we're not that. But if you see something, Genuine. anytime that we are checking out at a store, the cashier has gorgeous nails, I don't just think in my head, oh my God, those nails are cute. She compliments those, a lot. You would be actually surprised how much she compliments. I don't think we go out in public one time and she doesn't compliment Well, it just, you never know what kind of day someone's having. And obviously if they're wearing like cool shoes, a cool shirt, if their hair looks great, if their nails look good, like they're they know it too. It. And to hear that from someone is just like such a breath of, oh, and she, you could think about that the whole day, you know? Like, I love when I'm out and someone's like, oh my god, that jacket's so cool. I'm like, it is a cool jacket, isn't it? So I think that compliments go so much further than we realize. So compliment somebody. Also realize you're not a teenager forever. You're so not a teenager forever. So take it both ways. You have some responsibilities you have right now you will never have again. And some responsibilities you don't have right now you'll have later in life. Yeah. So just play it just like just you have it. truck through these years and they will be over before you know it. Is that it? I think that's it. This is well, thank fun. you. Yeah, this was really, really fun. Thank you. It was a, it was a kind of a twist on a QA. and a Make sure to follow my Instagram in case we do another one. Yes, yes, yes. We hope you loved it. We will see you again tomorrow. Bye.